Hello, it's Steve, and this is our sustainable journey. Um, it's raining, as you can probably tell, which means that spring is here. And with spring, um, we get warmer temperatures. Warmer temperatures means that any sort of thing that was living in the worm bins and hiding out um, any eggs or what have you can spring to life and um, start breeding and whatnot is what this is what I see it the most is in the spring and summertime and then they all go dormant in the winter so now um, I don't think we have any in these bins in here but I want to show you in the CFTs some of the bugs that I've seen in the last week um, and what kind of havoc they're causing um, just in the air really they're not really causing much pain or anything but they're out in the CFTs so come on take a look and I'll show you what we're dealing with and, and how we're dealing with them Worms seem to be doing all right, despite all the creepy crawlies and bugs and whatnot that are in here. Well, this one doesn't seem to be as bad as the other one. So, let's talk about pests in the worm bins. So, here you can see, if we dig a little bit, you might be able to see, wood louse. So those are pretty common in worm bins. Uh, I've disturbed them pretty well. Um, we get those. We get the fungus gnats. Um, we used to get mites when I had the, the regular smaller 15 gallon worm bins. Um, but those are pretty much it. Um, black soldier flies. We get, but those aren't pests in my mind. Those are awesome. Um, we have been specifically for the black soldier flies because they're so good at composting. So here you can see this is chock full of kind of little roly polies. So those are all wood wood lice, and they and they break stuff down. They're they're not bad. Um, in this setting because we have so much space for them to roam around in. Um, in a home bin, this would probably drive you nuts. Um, but here, and once you get down to the, the layer of castings, it's not that, there's nothing down there really. Um, so that's where all the, yeah, there's just nothing down that way. Here's where all the worms are, they're over up here. And I just, oh, I just spread them out all over the place. So they're living in harmony with all these pests. Um, you can see all the worms are doing just fine up here. On the top layer where all the food is, because that's what they're waiting for, because they're waiting to be fed. Um, but, so we could talk about ways to get rid of some of these pests. So like the, the fungus gnats that were in this bin, this bin had tons of fungus gnats, um, is usually a sign of moisture and probably overfeeding. Um, or if the worms just haven't gotten to it, so you can see, like, the worms haven't gotten to this stuff yet. This is a smaller bin. As far as thickness goes, it's only about six inches. So the worms just haven't built up their population yet versus the one behind me that's got, you know, two feet. It's up to here. It's about two feet worth of material. Um, so there's, you know, hundreds of thousands of worms in this one. Probably not very many worms in this one. Um, and so they haven't gotten to it. They're not as quick. When we give them the same amount of food, they don't get through it as well as the other ones. So 
if I dig down a little bit, you can see there's there's all the worms. They're working, you know, an inch below the surface, but there's still plenty of stuff on top that is taking a while to break down, and so that brings in the fungus gnats, um, which isn't necessarily a problem in my mind because it's out here in our barn, but it. Uh, it can be annoying. And in a home bin, oh, we got, this is where we dump all the eggs that the chickens crack. Um, in a home bin, it would be super annoying to have your home infested with fungus gnats or with the wood lice or mites. People comment all the time about mites. Um, I don't really see them out here very often in these bins, but we've had them in the past. So there's a couple different ways to solve this. Um, some it's to dry out your bins a little bit, so add more browns. Some is um, feed less, pocket feed, you know, do pocket feeding. So you're you're burying the food, which we should really be doing out here. Um, I just don't because we have so much going on. So that would be putting the food down and then a layer of castings on top of it to kind of bury it. That's another way to kind of hide it from the, the fungus gnats so that they can't actually burrow in there very easily. Um, and other ways would be with chemicals and killers and things like that. So one thing that we've used in the past, because we have it, well, we use it all the time, actually. We don't have it, not in the past. It's just, I guess the past was we use it in the fall, um, is diatomaceous earth. We have tons of it here. Um, so we, we have these bags that are just literally in the barn here for the other animals because we use them for uh, the chickens, which are right here, so that they can take their dust baths. Another are these... This is kind of a bad example. It's a, a milk jug. We have a lot of milk. When you have a, when you have cows, you have a lot of milk jugs, um, and we just reuse them over and over and over again for these types of things. But we use these. They're literally milk jug traps. That's what they're called. Um, and so you fill it with this like powder. You fill the milk jug like a third of the way filled with water and this nasty, stinky stuff that attracts the fungus gnats and flies and things like that. They go in there, they drown, and it's relatively chemical free, I guess. Another thing that I got because I wanted to try it out is this stuff. I've heard of this stuff, this quick strike. Um, this is more house flies, um, but it's whatever that chemical these chemicals are so i don't really want to use it but we'll try it for experimental purposes here um and for some reason it only came in that giant can so diet spacious earth the milk jug traps and the quick strike stuff um so we'll try maybe i'll set it up in three different cfts and we'll see how they do um usually what i do is I'll just layer the top with the diatomaceous earth because once it's wet, it doesn't work anymore. So if you sprinkle diatomaceous earth on a wet bin, you just wasted a bunch of diatomaceous earth. It doesn't hurt the worms. There's, there, the worms will be fine with diatomaceous earth. Um, it will just kill flying bugs and pests and stuff. So we usually leave it on top of these plastic covers that we have. Um, and that's usually enough to cut down on any of the pests that are in these bins, if there are any. So, you see there's a few in here. There's not a whole lot, there's stuff growing. So that is a, that's garlic. We may plant that. Um, so, let me grab my tool. Let's see if there's any other. There's, there's the worms right below the surface doing their thing. 
waiting for me to give him some more food. It's gonna take a bit for them to get through. But, yeah, we're all literally right here. And this is a giant gourd. It's gonna take them months to get through. They're trying, you can see them covering it. Um, but, yeah, there's not too many pests in these bins. A lot of worms. A lot of worms. And so because of some of the pests that we have, like with the flying fungus gnats or things like that, um, flies and stuff, we get spiders. So I posted a video last year with one of the giant spiders that we had in one of our bins. Um, because they eat the pests, so I don't really, I have to like the spiders, um, because they're helping control the pests, but they're still giant spiders. Um, I don't know where the worms. I know you're here, because I see the work you've done. All the stuff that's gonna take them forever to get through. You can see, like, just below the surface is where all the castings are. But again, all this stuff. Where'd you go, guys? Um, all this stuff is here to break. There they are. Um, it's here to break down these these food scraps and this this. Um food waste and cardboard and everything else that's in here. It's kind of dark over here so you can't see them, but um, there's definitely worms in there. You can see, I see. They were in there, 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 there. It's just dark over here in this corner. Um, here, we'll do one in front of a window. That might be easier for y'all to see. So that's why I don't get too upset about mites, gnats, wood louse um any of that stuff because they're breaking it down they're helping out there we go this is a worm party We're right there we got some potatoes growing oh no that's not a potato growing i don't know what that is but worms are digging they're chowing through this stuff Under the leaf. Yeah, you can see all the all the gnats and stuff. So there's also springtails that are good. Um, all the all these things are technically good. They're just annoying to have them flying in your face or in a in a home bin. Um, you'd want to get rid of them. But really, your main friend is going to be diatomaceous earth for the home bins, and just keep keep applying it. Um, and so I would, if you have a major infestation, you'd want to apply it on a regular basis. Um, every couple days, probably. It's not going to hurt your worms, so don't worry about that. Um, but you're going to want to apply it on a regular enough basis to get rid of those pests. Um, but really, they're there to do a job. And worms live in harmony. Like, you're not going to find... A lot of people think, like, the mites are there to eat your worms. Um, and you might see them eating dead worms, but they don't kill the worms. That's not their job. Um, unless the worm is already dead or dying. Um, they're not... They're not predators of worms or anything like that. Um, so I wouldn't worry about them. It just, it tells you that there's other things going on in your bins, whether they're too wet, too dry, you know, overfed, um, stuff like that. That's really what I would use the pests as an indicator of is that there's something else going on. So I tend to overfeed um, because I like to push these worms. <laughs> um, 
and so I'm I'm 100% guilty of that. So that's why I have them, but we're out here in the barn. I've been tempted to assign a chicken to each of these bins to eat any of the flying bugs, but I know they would also eat the worms because we've, we've fed them to them every so often as a treat. Um, or the uh, black soldier flies that we come across. Because those are, again, those are, I don't know, maybe this big, but the, the larva. Um, and they look scary and, and gross because they're, you know, giant maggots, essentially. But they're really good composters. They're better than earthworms, technically. I'd have more black soldier flies if I could provide them the conditions that they really, really like um, year-round. So that's the issue, is they want it really warm um and we just can't do that in north central illinois so so we can't um unless i did it inside the house and there's no way that steph would allow that um to ever happen so so yeah so those are some of the pests that i see if i if i can get some black soldier flies it's still too early in spring i think for them to come into the barn here but we have some in some of the outer outside bins, I'm sure, at this point. Um, I'll show them to you. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll make a video with just some of the black soldier flies that we have and, and show you how quick they eat. So, so yeah, I just want to talk about some pests um, and kind of let you know what, what we see out in our bins. So what kind of pests do you guys see in your bins and how have you, uh, how have you gotten rid of them? Let me know in the comments. And maybe we'll post a video and, and talk about some of the other pests and how to treat those. But those are the ones we see. I'll put out some diatomaceous earth and some of those milk jug things. Um, let's see if it gets rid of them. All right, let's do an unboxing of a milk jug trap. And I can show you what, what comes inside of these, what it is. All right, so inside is one pouch, two pouch, and then a little protective thingy. And there we go. And then we've got two of these. And that is all there is to it. So, set that aside. This stuff. This is the chemical attractant uh, Z9 tricosine is one of the ingredients, and then putrescent whole eggs, egg solids, rotting egg, okay, uh, and then trimethylamine and indole, I don't know, really, I, I'm trying to guess what that is, but basically putrid whole egg solids, okay, rotting egg, so be careful when you open these. Inside each bag are two of these little pouches. Do not open this little pouch, okay? Um, you'll regret it immediately. You probably don't even really wanna handle it too much because it's disgusting. But what I'm gonna do, let me find one of my uncapped milk jugs, here we go. So, we'll take a milk jug. Let me empty it out. And they give you a total of four of these little pouches. So, you have plenty to do this a couple of times. So I'm gonna pour out whatever was in here. We'll refill it. Turn on the water. All right. All right. So, you put the pouch 
put the pouch in the milk jug carefully so as not to break it. I'm doing this with one hand, so this is probably not going to end well for me. Please don't break. There we go. Alright, now. Get up a little bit of water. I can already smell it. Oh, it's lovely smelling. Alright, so we'll just kind of shake it. What happens is the pouch. I don't know if you can see it, but it slowly breaks down and stinks. I do not recommend doing this in your house. Um, that would be awful. So, I basically leave it in the center of the bin like that. Um, that odor is enough to attract the flies. And what happens is they fly in here. There's a little hole. You can't see it very easily. Um, I get some light on it. There's a little hole back here. So they fly in there, down into the liquid, and they get trapped. And they can't get out. That's literally all there is to it. Um, and... They fly in and die. And then you can discard this when it's full or when you've eliminated the problem. Um, but again, it stinks. So I don't recommend doing this one. I recommend doing the diatomaceous earth. And what we do with that, oh my gosh, somebody's laying an egg. Um, what we do with that is they just take a scooper, one of our many feed scoopers, Scoop a little bit of the diatomaceous earth. It looks like ash or sand or what have you. And then I just sprinkle it over the top of the bin. That's it. Um, you want to be careful. You don't really want to breed this stuff in. Because um, essentially what it is, my understanding of what it is, is that it's really sharp. I don't know, I think of it like fiberglass. Um, it's not, it's, there's a, a real name for it, but that's how I think of it. So it's got these really sharp corners. And so when these flying insects get it on them, it cuts them or they breathe it in and it cuts them, um, which sounds awful, but it kills them in that way. Um, it can't hurt the worms, and I don't know why. I'm not the uh, I'm not all sciency. Um, and it can't kill you unless you breathe a lot of it. I guess it would probably be awful. <clears throat> so that is the diatomaceous earth. Next, we'll try the quick strike. I don't even know how to open this thing because this is a full-on can. Um, huh, and there's no quick and easy doodad. Let's see, read entire label. Do not use inside homes or any place where children or animals might be present. Do not spread granules or bait stations within reach of children or animals. We might not be using this one. Do not apply where poultry or animals, especially dogs and young calves, can pick it up or lick it. Right. Huh. May be used around and outside of milking parlors, boiler houses, kennels. So what I may end up doing is I might put this inside of a cup or a tray or something and put it in a far corner where the chickens can't get to or put it on top of um something inside one of the cfts but i clearly need some sort of can opener which i didn't 
I never would have anticipated out here needing a can opener for something like that. So I'll deal with that. I'll find something and I'll post the video. Um, next week's video will have the fly strike stuff in it. How about that? All right. That'll be it for today. Um, we will see you all next time. All right. Take care. Mm -hmm.